let's now add some base to this. Uh, so I'm going to right click over here in the right hand side of the rack. In fact, let me just uh, minimize the sequencer for now. Now you can, you're more than welcome to uh, create your new instruments below the ones that you've already created, but I quite like to keep uh, drums on one, percussion on another, bass on another side of the rack. Um, so I'm just going to go instruments. Now there are four instruments here, four sort of, uh, you've got three synthesizers and an IDA instrument device, which makes things like really basic pianos and strings and drums and that sort of thing. Um, so you can pick any one of these synthesizers. I am just going to go for the Thor synthesizer, which is a really powerful synth that comes with reason out of the box. And again, it's got this browse button, so I'm going to browse for a patch. You're immediately taken to the Thor patches, but if you're not, remember Reason Factory Sound Bank. Scroll down, you should see Thor patches. I'm going to delve into the bass folder. And let's go for that. And click on OK. Now, um, this is where if you have a MIDI controller, uh, some sort of MIDI keyboard, let me just go into Reason's Preferences control surfaces. So you've plugged it into your computer via USB. You can click on the auto detect surfaces button and it should pick it up. If it doesn't, you can click add. If you can spot your manufacturer, you pick that out and more specifically in the next drop down menu, you would pick um, the model. Or if you can't see your manufacturer in that list, just click on other. You can leave it on MIDI control keyboard. MIDI input, you can click on find and then you would just have to press a key and hopefully Reason will then pick it up. For those of you that don't have a MIDI keyboard to hand, what you can do is press F4 and this brings up what's called the on-screen piano key. So you can either use the mouse to play the, uh, to play the synthesizer or you can use the computer keys and there's a little uh, key there on what does what. But we don't need to use this at the moment because we're going to cheat a little bit. Um, there's a device that comes with Reason. I'm going to go Create Other. And we're looking for this thing, Matrix Pattern Sequencer. So you need to make sure that the Thor device itself is selected. Obviously, you just click on it once with the left mouse button. And you get that uh, blue box around it to let you know that it's, um, it's been highlighted. Click on Matrix Pattern Sequencer. Now this is a device where you can just have a bit of an experiment uh, and try and create a pattern of notes which can then be used to trigger Thor and it saves you from having to play things in freehand yourself. So if you're not confident yet playing the keyboard or you're just uh, bereft of any sort of inspiration for a bass line, it's a great device for having to mess around and seeing what you can come up with. So press the run button. And the matrix will start to generate you a pattern of notes. So these are the pictures of notes here. So you can just click in here with the mouse. And this is the note gate underneath here, which decides how long the note is that we're going to hear. Now a lot of the patches that come with Thor will have a couple of controls here that you can play around with to change the timbre of the sound. Um, and there's a couple of buttons as well. This one, as you can hear, sub oscillator that makes it a bit more beefy and that just makes it a bit more punchy. Now straight away you can hear that the Thor is totally overpowering all the other instruments that we've got in this, uh, in this song at the moment. So I'm going to go over to the mixer 
Let's just pull the volume of that right back. Hit the space bar. And that's a little bit better. So we're gonna come back to the matrix in a moment. What I wanna do is set up a bit of a loop in my arrangement so that I've got something to play along to. At the moment, after we get past bar 17, the drums will cease playback. So the other thing that we can use LNR for is setting up a loop. So I'm gonna loop around these four bars here. Down in the transport, you'll see a button called loop. You just need to make sure that the playhead sits somewhere between L and R, but for argument's sake, I'll drop it um, at the left locator. That's maybe a little bit high pitch for a bass. So what I'm going to do is, this is where you decide what octave the matrix is working in. I'm going to pull this down one octave. You can see we're changing the octave there. The other thing that you can do with the matrix is change the resolution. So at the moment, each of those notes is a sixteenth. We could change that if we wanted to say an eighth, which is half as fast. And that's maybe a little bit less hectic, so I'm quite happy with that. As with the re-drum, you can have up to 32 different patterns stored on here. But I'm happy with that for the time being. So let's have a look at how we get this pattern across and to the arrangement. What we need to do is we need to make sure that the Thor track is selected rather than the Matrix track. I'm going to right click on the Matrix and if we scroll down to the bottom we can see there's an option to copy pattern to the track. Now we can actually get rid of the Matrix now because it's fulfilled its purpose. It's generated us a pattern of MIDI notes that we're using to trigger that Thor instrument. So I'm actually literally going to select the matrix, press backspace, it prompts me, it asks me if I want to uh, delete the device, I'm going to delete it. And what we're left with is So there we go, that's just a nice quick easy way of generating yourself a pattern of notes. It's called the Matrix Pattern Generator. As with the uh, Dr. Octorex, there's a further section to this Thor. I'm going to press this button, Show Programmer. So the Thor, like I said previously, is a really, really powerful synthesizer that probably looks really horrible and complicated, and it is, to be, to be perfectly honest, but um, it comes with hundreds of really, really good presets and a great way of learning how to use a synthesizer is to load up a preset and then try and reverse engineer that by showing the programmer and having a little tweak to see what each of these controls does, see, what, see how it affects the sound. So that's our bass line done. Let's uh, now add some sort of uh, lead line to this.